peace. This is King Noble Black Supremacy. This is going to be my part two on the sovereignty, black sovereign versus revolutionary versus black revolutionary. And this one is black revolutionary. I'm sorry, black sovereign slash revolutionary by default. Now, what do I mean by that? The black sovereign is a revolutionary by default. Simple the fact that all black people in America do not want sovereignty. Are not ready for sovereignty. And are not even interested in it. But us sovereign nationals. Us who are in the total supreme consciousness. In the state of supreme rule. Still care about our people. We still care about the condition of our people in America. And we want to be vigilant and proactive in situations and circumstances that affect them as it relates to them dealing with the institutions and the system of white supremacy. So we use our position of sovereignty to affect, we use our power as a foreign national infrastructure to affect the social condition and situation of black people in America, which gives it a revolutionary appearance because we just refuse to sit by and sit quiet on every situation and, and issue that affects black people. That's when the whole Black Lives Matter piece come up and us getting shot down in the streets. We can't just stand by and watch and see this happen without becoming proactive in some way even though we don't believe that the system is going to change in a certain sense and we expect the system of white supremacy to be doing exactly what it's doing that's what we expect it to be doing what else the hell would it do um, it's threatened by the presence of foreign nationals foreign black nationals um, who they call African Americans foreign African nationals whatever name you want to put on it more I don't care what you call it they're threatened by us coming into power in this shared region they fear us coming into power so out of them being threatened they continue to take us out shoot us in the head they're, th they're at war with us now even though we're foreign nationals we're indigenous to a shared region meaning that what you call America we have every right to be here as they do now, some people say, well, we were indigenous to the land. Um, we were the indigenous people here. We were the Washita's. Um, we were the Moors, the Maroons, whatever you want to call it. There are many arguments to say we were here. I, I'll allow other people to make those arguments. Um, sovereigns don't spend a lot of time arguing. What I will say is, is that we have every right to be here that the so-called white man has. Who authorized him him to be over here? What what special right does he have over this landmass? He doesn't have any more special rights than we do. So even if we were not the indigenous people of this land, even if somebody wanted to make that argument, the white man most definitely does not have any more power or authority in this particular hemisphere or region than we do. So it's a shared region between us and the white man and other nationalities that has become a melting pot that we call America. It's a shared region. But while it is a shared region, we are foreign nationals to its body policy, to, to its governmental body. We're not a part of that government. We're not a part of its governmental reality. It's, 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 it's the objective of its government is not our, our human rights. It's not our civil rights. It's not set up for us is set up for the white man to protect him and his interests and his society predominantly and we would like to force it as revolutionaries and the reformists just kind of sway over and represent us and help us out which is more than likely not going to happen so we are in a shared region but we're foreign nationals to his jurisdiction to his governmental infrastructure infrastructure so I want y'all to understand that that there are two governments can exist on this body 
it can exist. Just as much as if you go to Fort Lauderdale or certain parts in Florida, you have overlapping counties and police jurisdictions. You have different jurisdictions that exist in one place simultaneously, even though it's the same exact region or the same space or the same county or the same municipality or the same city. That's the same with blacks in America. Since we're here, we have to come into our own political empowerment. We have to come into our own um, enforcement empowerment, into our own nation state. It's our responsibility to rise into nation state status in America. Don't let, because of all, all these crackers walking around here, confuse you to the fact that we could become a sovereign state overnight. It can happen. It happens all the time. All we got to do is just come on into power. Um, some groups already wanted that. The Black Legion was trying to take a certain part of the South to take it over and, and turn it into a black nation. They was going to liberate certain southern states along the Mason-Dixon line or something to that nature. So this idea is not new. So we are a nation, not within a nation, but a nation alongside of another nation. By not realizing that, by thinking we're a nation within a nation, we think our relevance, the relevance of us being a nation, is less significant than the nation that we're in. So we think because since we're a nation within a nation, that the nation we think we're in is more is more important. And it kind of takes away from the fact that we are a nation. But that's just not the case. We're not a nation within a nation at all. Because the nation you think you're within will show you every day how much you're not within that nation. That you're not within the government or the affairs of that nation. When you look at the Flint water situation, you see we're not within that nation that's taking care of itself. When you look at New Orleans, you see that we're not within that nation. When you see the poverty, the unemployment, when you see the incarceration, when you see the gentrification, the genocide, you see that we are not a nation within that nation. That we are a nation rejected by another nation that we share a region with. The best thing that we have is the right to be, the uncontested right to be in this region. That's it. That's the only thing that the white man has really given us is the uncontested right. Well, he can't say all oh, black people, you don't have a right to be over here in America. When he comes to the point of realizing we don't have a right to be here in America, he'll just be shooting us down in the streets, which he's doing. But as far as on an immigration level, on a deportation level, that conversation has not really been given much credence. But we have an uncontested right to be here. He won't argue that, no matter how he has legislated his laws. And he won't say, well, you all don't have even a right to be over here. So now we have to take the momentum of that uncontested right to be here to go full force into establishing our own sovereign nation state. We are already nationals. We are already a nation. But we have to put into effect that which is going to protect and defend and build up the immunity of that nation from the tyranny of their foreign nationalism, from the tyranny of their government, the tyranny of their jurisdiction. We have to rise up and, and defend ourselves from, from their tyranny, from their invasion, from them kidnapping us and holding us hostage and taking us within their jurisdiction. We have to become an army. We have to become militant. That's what black militancy really comes in at. That's the true objective of black militancy is to protect black sovereignty, the sovereignty of our nation, to establish our indigenous right. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter if you call yourself indigenous, but if you can't establish an indigenous right, if you can't defend an indigenous right, it doesn't matter because the white man is not indigenous, but he, he defends his right to be in America. To be here and to and to govern his own affairs and to govern himself. So 
by being a black sovereign in America, you end up in a revolutionary box by default because sovereignty being taught to the Negro is a revolutionary idea. If you've been under the, the, the white man for 400 years and then some Negro come along and say, you know, we're actually sovereign. We're actually really not under the white man. It's going to be a revolutionary concept. So you end up falling into the revolutionary box. And the language of freedom and liberation for black people has come as a revolutionary conversation for those people who had a most effective communication. And two, just being melanated in America, you're going to go through whatever the trials and tribulations that the consensus reality of black people allow to happen to them. You're not immune from that, just even being black in America. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to be treated like a nigger, whether you call yourself more Hebrew, a sovereign national, whatever you call yourself, you're not going to escape the political situation that we confront here in America. And for you to fight against the force of that stigmatization, to fight against that, it would appear as you are revolutionary to most. That your conversation may sound similar. But the difference between being a revolutionary and a sovereign is ultimately objective. The objective of a sovereign is to be completely and absolutely independent. As a nation, as a melanated people, as a black people, our goal is to be independent from them completely and, 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 ha and have our own and, and set up our own nation that's sovereign and can, can, can govern and defend itself and its, its, its boundaries and its territories. The objective of the revolutionary is to change society, to change the masses of people within the region where they are at. To persuade them to some idea that's going to ultimately equal bet social betterment for everybody within that region. So it is more of an integrated idea because we know the system or the government affects everybody. The black sovereign nationalists don't give a goddamn about everybody. They just care about their people. So they're not coming up with ideas and plans that's going to affect everybody within a region. Or everybody within the world at that, at, at, to that degree. They're interested in the liberation and the sovereignty and the independence of their own people. That's their main meditation and their main focus. While they can find alliances with other people in their issues, situations, and circumstances, their main objective is the protection and the defense and the independence of their people. To show you we are not sovereigns, you can just see how other non-sovereign entities, non-nationalistic entities jump bandwagoned our movements. The gay rights movement, you know, all these other movements just hopped on and other other ethnic groups hopped on to civil rights. They just hop right on it, they just bandwagon right on it because it was not something that was unique to our nation. It was not something that was unique to us. It was an an idea that was ultimately going to be integrated within society as a whole. But black sovereignty and true black independence is not an integrated idea. It does have nothing to do with nobody else but black people. So with the revolutionary in the end, the world will be a better place. The nation or the state that they're in will be a better place. That's their interest. There'll be better legislation. It will just become a better place for everybody. And one of the benefits of it becoming a better place is black people will be treated better. But for the black sovereign, in the end, we'll have a stronger, more powerful, more defended sovereign nation. And we will be more in power. And ultimately, as it relates to our conditions, we will be in the upper hand without no problems unapologetically. This part two is King Noble Black Supremacy. Join my website, www.kingnoble.com blackrulership.com and also join www.kingnobleuncensored.com